is Arlene and you are listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. And for me, uh, I, I just, I'm just glad uh, to be here for our ABC dialogue because we have a very interesting uh, guest. His name is um, Tom uh, Wong. He's from Cheng & Co. And he's also the Chief Operating Officer for Cheng & Co. Uh, be- um, before we talk more about uh, the topic of today, i just like to let you all know that you can always follow us on Facebook and Twitter at DurianASEAN.com and you can listen to us live right now at www.DurianASEAN.com or if you're on your mobile, you can go to an, to your TuneIn app and listen to us. Uh, and if you miss our show, you can always go to YouTube for our podcast at DurianASEAN.com as well. Uh, you, uh, uh, during ASEAN uh, YouTube channel and uh, if you want to get uh, on hold what is uh, what we have for the last uh, for the last few days uh, you can always subscribe to us at durianasean at gmail.com to get our weekly digest so for let, let's move to our today's topic uh, today we have a very interesting one actually and um, um, as we all know this is towards the um, middle of the year already of 2014 so so it's time for a mid-year economic review uh, we and with Tom Wong here he will be discussing how the uh, the mid-year economic uh, performance of Malaysia has impact uh, have given impact to the Malaysia's SME so welcome uh, thank welcome, you Arlene. Tom Wong thank you Arlene for having us today here yeah, yeah um um, maybe you can describe about the Cheng and Co. How wh- what what Cheng and Co. is do uh, does and also how does it help SME in general as right. a whole? Uh, okay. Uh, just a bit of introduction on Cheng and Co. Uh, Cheng and Co. is one of the largest local earning firm here in Malaysia. Uh, our vision is to uh, uh, have international recognition in the Asian region. So uh, I think today. We already have uh, not only in Malaysia 12 uh, offices. We have more. We have uh, four locations uh, overseas, which is our branches. Uh. So interestingly, is in uh, China, Hong Kong. We've been there for more than 10 years. Uh, we also in uh, Singapore, uh, Australia, and also uh, recently in Myanmar. Oh, you you you're actually quite widespread. Yeah, all not, over the Asia Pacific bad. region. Yeah, actually. not too bad. So it's uh, really a Malaysian company going overseas. Uh, to uh, venture out on our own. Uh. Mm. How, how do you start to get out of Malaysia and you know oh, okay. start to have branches all over all the right. Asia Pacific? Uh, usually it's because our clients, uh, which are Malaysian companies going uh, overseas venturing, so uh, they they tag along us as a uh, their accountants and also as their business consultants uh, to join venture with uh, overseas partners. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, mainly our first uh, overseas branches we started in. Uh, Hong Kong and China, where at that time, there was a lot of Malaysian companies going over there to uh, buy things and even uh, start joint ventures over there. So that's how we started our branches over there, which, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting ride. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, for Cheng and Co, what is your mission and vision? Okay. Uh, of course, our vision is uh, to be the largest local learning firm here in the, in the a- Asian region. Uh, when you say largest local, local will be a Malaysian brand company going overseas uh, in Malaysia itself. Uh, I think we are one of the largest. Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, secondly, of course, our mission is to provide a one-stop professional uh, center uh, to our clients. Mm-hmm. What kind of service that you provide? And oh. your clients are mainly SMEs, isn't it? Yes, uh, mm-hmm. we got more than uh, 5,000 clients, uh, mm-hmm. mostly uh, companies. Uh, of course, we have certain individuals. Uh, uh, but uh, more to do, uh, our clients are mostly SMEs uh, in various industries, uh, and so, uh, quite interestingly, uh, the services we provide, usually a traditional accounting firm, I think they have what, audit tax and secretarial, mm-hmm. uh, plus a bit of consulting. Uh, on our side, we have 16 services. Some interesting services that we have, of course, is HALA consulting. Mm, that's interesting, the yeah. HALA one. <laughs> <laughs> so, but generally, we don't do HALA for Malaysia. Mm-hmm. What we do is uh, we do HALA for overseas company that mm-hmm. uh, want to get their HALA certification here. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, interestingly, also we do uh, Indonesian hala, whereby Malaysian companies going to Indonesia, uh, that might want to uh, get. They have Indonesia. different standards, isn't it? Uh, oh. just different standard setting bodies. Uh. Ah, okay. But I think the standards generally uh, quite uh, standardized, mm-hmm. la, in a sense. 
So uh, that that's how we got into this halal because our clients, uh, one is our China clients and mm-hmm. also our Malaysian company going to uh, Indonesia itself. Uh. So uh, other services that we have, uh, I think my partner has come here before, yeah, uh, to going to Taiwan mm-hmm. uh, for IPOs and all of which. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, interestingly, is uh, yeah one of the highlights uh, whereby we bring SMEs in Malaysia to go over to Taiwan to list. Uh, SME also in Malaysia, they are partly in sunset industries. Uh, we talk about textile, uh, we talk about all these uh, furnitures. Uh, not mm. so easy for them to get listed here in Malaysia anymore. Yeah. But why why they they don't go out from the sunset industry? Why they ha- they are still sticking in there? Uh, when I say sunset, it means that uh, in a sense our capital market here, uh, they just have an impression whereby oh, as long as you're in textile or you're in furniture, which is China is now the big boy. Mm-hmm. You can never survive. Uh. Uh. <laughs> so, and also, uh, I think many, many companies have uh, closed down uh, in this industry. Uh. Mm-hmm. So, it, it's just the impression is not not good. Uh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but generally here, a lot of Malaysian companies, uh, I myself, uh, uh, I'm a KL boy, but I've uh, stayed in uh, Badu Pahat. Mm-hmm. Badu Pahat, they've got about what, 20 listed companies. Uh. Wow. And a lot of them are in textile. So <laughs> 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 so, uh, the irony. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the funny thing is, uh, most of them, of course, closed down, but privately, they still own very, very big textile companies. Mm. So, yeah, maybe the listed companies has closed down, but uh, generally, their private companies are still doing very well. Mm. Uh, why? I guess it's because uh, when you're listed, of course, you, you, you have a lot of uh, targets you need to hit. Uh, the, the market wants you to hit certain targets, certain profit targets, and all. So, uh, I guess really a lot of pressure on the company itself. Uh. But at the end of the day, when they're private, they can really uh, concentrate on the business and the management can run it better without any public uh, analyst to tell them that, hey, your company is not doing well. You must invest more and all. And you also provide a lot of uh, advice on the GSC and as well as the Personal Data Protection Act. Correct. Uh, Personal Data Protection, uh, we do do some, but I I think you talk about GST. Quite interestingly, one of my partner, uh, he just uh, posted up in Facebook. Uh Hey, this is my 40... 40 plus uh, seminar that I've done uh, talking to people I can literally sleep and talk about it <laughs> <laughs> it's quite interesting so if you think about it uh, every seminar there's about what 20 people coming so let's say if, uh, 50 times 20 is about 1000 businesses as, uh, we, yeah, we have conducted this seminar over just a period of what, 60 days so yeah a lot of uh, and mostly is our uh, own clients uh, SMEs uh, they're really uh, I mean, and most of them also is their second time going for GST seminars, which... Oh, they do. Is yeah, it? because custom itself do organize free seminars, uh, but a lot of things are quite general. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess some of them do come to ours because they want to get more in-depth uh, and they will, And they have a risk of being penalized, isn't it, if they don't yeah, follow the GST of rules? Of course, of course. Uh, when the time comes, uh, it's still 1st April 2005. Uh, if you look at it, yeah, it's quite far away. But, uh, and of course, Malaysian mentality is always uh, just wait and see. Yeah, <laughs> wait and see. Even so, the government itself. Yeah. <laughs> see so whether the, go- the people will Yeah, maybe the post me for another year. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't think it will. So, uh, because really our government needs to do that. Mm. Uh, based on whatever they say in the budget, uh, last budget and then coming budget, uh, 2015. Mm. So, yeah, generally GST is uh, a lot of SMEs now are preparing uh, on uh, how their company can uh, manage this uh, GST mm. implementation. Uh. And um, I mean, you also and at the end of this, you also give the advice on uh, the economic performance of this country and how SME can sort of prepare themselves sure. and fit themselves in to the economy sure. itself. Economy itself, and and that is why we are starting our discussion today on sure. the mid-year economic economic review. Sure. Uh, how it impact to Malaysia's SME. Mm. So first of all. What do you think of our Malaysian economic performance for the mid-year review? All right. Uh, okay. I, of course, if you look at it, based on the Bank Negara reports and all, uh, the Malaysian economy is projected to grow by 4.5 4. to 5.5% this year. Uh, and for the first quarter, uh, I think our growth, uh, the, we, we reported a strong growth of 6.2% which is definitely much higher than the yeah, even the projected world, Yeah, the World Bank reported that as well. Correct, like, correct. Uh, the Malaysian economy is performing actually quite well yep, for yep, this year. Yep. Uh, interestingly also, it's not because of... Uh, also improved due to better external demand condition. And uh, our export, interestingly, exports, not just... Uh, not. Uh, I think last year was a lot of properties, mm-hmm. uh, internal consumption, but this year exports has grown by 13%. So 
interestingly and that, uh, that means uh, our production have actually increased correct. in terms of the the yield correct correct itself. so uh, i did do a bit of analysis uh, small mm -hmm. analysis uh, i think electronic industry and of course services uh, is a big contributor to this uh, increase uh. so uh, uh, partly the growth, the growth was driven by a, a stronger expansion in domestic demand and a turnaround in net export. Uh, this is a Bank Negara reports. Private sector activity remained the main driver of growth in the first quarter, with sustained growth in both consumption and investment activities. Uh. Mm -hmm. So real export of goods and services grew at the fastest pace, while real imports of goods. So we are not importing as much, and services were sustained, resulting in a positive growth in net exports. Uh. Mm -hmm. So interestingly. Uh, yeah, uh, quite an interesting news. Uh, exporting is more. Uh, also, generally, uh, if I re if you read the news report, uh, uh, those uh, developed economies like US and Europe, I think they are doing uh, better. They have solved uh, a lot of their crisis, and uh, yeah, we we are here to, and a lot of our companies here could uh, export even more products mm. overseas. Uh. But why do you think that our economy is doing better this year? What is what are the indicators? What are the what are the indicators that show why Malaysia is doing better this year besides the export growth? Oh, I I guess <laughs> I mean generally I mean uh, if it's if it's uh, if I look at the Bank Negara report last year mainly uh, our growth was driven by internal consumptions, mm -hmm. uh, especially what you call uh, properties, whereby a lot of property buying has been around. Uh, credit is cheap. And uh, um, I mean, it's just probably in constructions. It was last year, right? Yeah, last mm -hmm. year. So <laughs> for manufacturing last year, I think they didn't have much activity. Uh, I mean, not as interesting as uh, this first quarter. Uh, generally, because maybe the, the situation in the overseas uh, uh, are not doing so well. And uh, I, I guess they were getting really prepared very well. To uh, and, and of course, problem in China whereby, uh, I mean, China, is, as you know, is uh, as I know, uh, basing on some clients that we've talked to, uh, now it's not that cheap to do businesses in China anymore mm. also. So uh, generally uh, here in Malaysia where we are more stable, uh, 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 I mean our, our expertise also is uh, 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 can be comparable. Uh, and then uh, of course I think we solve a bit of our labour issues. Luckily. <laughs> <laughs> what are the uh, labour issues that happen? Oh well, we had the minimum wage coming up. Mm. Uh, a lot of uh, companies need to like, renegotiate their contracts, whereby mm -hmm. uh, at that time uh, they already like, hey, I want to commit to a contract. Mm -hmm. and now with the minimum wage policy, which uh, was a ding dong for a while, uh, government say, oh, stop. Then later on again. So <laughs> <laughs> wait and see yeah. policy of the government. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but interestingly, a lot of the clients that we have, they were able to manage this and pass on the cost to their. Uh, what you call their clients, uh, mm -hmm. who are usually uh, overseas clients. I mean, the, the cost of employing uh, yes, employees. Yes, 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 yes. If you look at it, yeah, it's 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 quite a quite a lot of cost uh, to the mm -hmm. to the company itself. Even their foreign workers, they have to pay that minimum wage. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, our companies have managed it quite well, and uh, able to pass on the cost. So I guess last year, uh, after all this minimum wage has been implemented, uh, yeah, companies just uh, manufacturers especially. Uh, are well prepared to you know do business uh, overseas, uh. so mm -hmm. partly is because uh, last year was just uh, yeah just getting ready. I mean, see how's the cost going, and uh, yeah, this year get all the contracts and start uh, exporting to them. Uh. So yeah, that's that's how I see it. Uh. Mm -hmm. What about how how does the mid-year economic uh, of Malaysia affect the budget spending of the government? Um, I I mean. If you look at it now, I, I think many, many governments or any governments in the world, in my opinion, the the the, the, the main spending is still on constructions, mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure projects, mm -hmm. uh, and mainly it's in Malaysia. Our big projects is uh, MRT projects, uh, big big. I think they're doing another tall building mm -hmm. <laughs> for whatever reasons. Uh, which tall building you're mentioning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, uh, our EPF has uh, been uh, going around, uh, taking over our our redeveloping our our. I mean, our Puru Jail and, uh, you know, Sungai Bulo area, uh, which sounds very interesting. And uh, mm -hmm. they're not just getting any, uh, I think mean, they're getting reputable developers to develop it, which is quite interesting. And of course, the ongoing MRT project as yes, well. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And MRT project pro uh, providing connectivity and all. 
so uh, yeah i i think this one is truly uh, drive our economy forward mm-hmm. uh and uh, because of mrt you can see our property is doing very well and uh, uh, but of course now government has uh, cooled down with it a bit uh by uh, i mean uh, i i'm a i'm a layman uh to buy a property now yes it's easy, it's easy. But uh, to get financing now, the banks has become a bit tighter, mm. which uh, is a good thing, lah. If I look at it, <laughs> not so, uh, not so uh, what you call uh, st- uh, the banks are not so easy lending, lah, which is mm. good. Uh, uh, yeah, our government is doing quite well on that, lah. Mm. Uh. Uh, last year, you said that uh, our, our, I mean, the the economy was spurred by internal consumption. Yep. But what do you think of this year? Uh, do you think the market is still big as well for SME um, or for for businesses in general? Okay. Um. If if you look at it for SMEs, uh, I mean, I I I've 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 seen many clients. Uh, those that survive really, they are very very, so called uh, hands on on the management and uh, yeah, they they really so called uh, uh, think about how to uh, go out the box uh, uh just just a small case study for you i mean uh, i have a client who does uh, this uh, a car those are strut bars strut mm-hmm. bars are just uh, bars that you bend and then put in the car la. very uh. interesting so but uh the funny thing is that uh malaysia is a very i i, I never i don't even put any safety bars in my car <laughs> and i wonder if why manufacturers don't put it but uh they have a good market uh instead of uh, emphasizing on speed they emphasizing on safe safety mm-hmm. and interestingly they export more about what 40 50% are exported. So uh and then the interesting part is that uh they use uh free like internet software like YouTube and all to to kind of record how to install this uh, uh bars so that anybody in the world can just uh, buy the bar and install themselves. So yeah, that's pretty uh, because of that they're doing quite well. And uh yeah, and of course uh they are if, if you say medium so called uh Oh, I mean th- this kind of strut bars. Uh, their brand name is yeah quite popular, mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of companies have copied before uh, this uh, brand name. So, uh, I I guess for SME really, the, and and the guy is not even the owner. He he's not even a, what you call a, a engineer or anything. I see. He, yeah, interestingly, interesting. so, uh, he 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 does his own website. He updates his own website. So. Yeah, really. Sometimes, uh, businesses. Uh, if I look at this, sometimes they really need to uh, think about how to do the business for SME especially. Yeah, uh, because uh, yeah, and uh, uh, but this is in a niche market. Uh, we do have also clients recently that we talk to is in those uh bigger manufacturing industries which are supporting those uh, uh big uh, manufacturers such as uh, the car industry. So uh, they are subcontractors. Uh, uh not. Uh, interestingly, uh, because of the GST, a lot of these uh, subcontractors, the I mean, a lot of us think that oh, because of GST, manufacturers are getting better and better. Uh, but in the in, but in reality is that uh, a lot of these subcontractors, uh, who manufacture a certain part of a, let's say a a whole car, uh, frankly they're getting pressed even more. I see. <laughs> That's the funny part. I I I I thought it was so easy. Uh, g- generally, is that uh, the main contractors are just pressing on the profits of their subcons. So, but interestingly, these subcontractors are usually SMEs. Uh, they they think out of the box, and then hey, I need to go. Uh, instead of just being a subcontractor, I must be a main contractor. So they start investing in more. Uh, instead of uh, just being a part of a whole product, uh, they are manufacturing the product itself. Uh, uh, either manufacturing or assembling the whole product itself which in a sense uh, yeah they they're moving up the value chain which is very interesting la, and uh, that should be the way la, for Malaysian SME going forward i see uh, rather than yeah just being a labor contractor mm-hmm. that's true <laughs> yeah. um we will take a short break sure. uh, we will return back with more discussion Doors of sharing This is Arlene and we are returning back with more uh, discussion regarding on the mid-year economic review on 
on the and the impact to Malaysia's SME. So uh, we have Tom Wong again. He will be sharing with us. <laughs> Thanks, the, Ali. <laughs> and early on, we discussed more on the, the government budget spending and the market economy and also the economic performance uh, of Malaysia as well as how how uh, uh, SMEs you know um being impacted by it. But actually, I just I just want to highlight on the budget spending that the government has allocated towards the SME. Like how, like how hmm. much is it, and what it is, and how would it help them to sort of prepare themselves for the up for the upcoming economy or yep. for current time as well? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I uh, I just point out a few uh, things. Uh, in two zero one four for the two zero one four budget, uh, our government spending was projected to be at uh, two hundred sixty four billion, hmm. uh, where two hundred seventeen billion was for operating expenditure, which is the operating expenditure to run the government. And uh, I think most of it is for uh, salaries, uh, operating expenditures. Uh. And uh, 46 billion was for capital or development expenditure. Uh, I, I think for this discussion, I just wanted to point out to SME uh, where the government has uh, specific funds for them to take advantage of. Uh, generally, uh, the government has allocated about 3 billion, which is a big sum, for maritime development fund. Mm. Uh, maritime is like ships, uh, uh, I, I got a few clients. Uh, but we, the, we are actually quite popular. Uh, we, are we a popular spot for port, you know, like for ship coming uh, in, out, in and out? For yeah, thank God now we have, uh, I mean, North Port, we have uh, uh, PTP and all, mm-hmm. uh, which are doing quite well. And uh, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's instead of ships going to our neighbor, Singapore, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now uh, I think we are doing much better. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, the allocation for this maritime development fund, I I think it's 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 about time, uh, uh, and uh, it's the right time, uh, because it, it currently, if I understand from some of our clients, uh, you talk about ships uh, owners, uh, really they're not doing so well, so uh, yeah, they need all these funding as they can, uh, and uh, partly it's because uh, last time there was uh, very very cheap funding, now uh, it's a bit tighter really, which is good uh, for us. So uh, another thing I, I like to instead of um, besides uh, maritime development fund, the government has also allocated 1.2 billion for visit Malaysia year. Uh, that's advertisement for, and promotion. Uh, that's for the tourism sector. Correct, correct, correct. So uh, and also two billion for special tourism loan. Mm. So uh, I th- I think this uh, and and of course for any uh, tourism related uh, companies. Uh, our government even allocated special tax incentive, uh, mm. whereby I think 70 or 100 percent of their uh, they, they don't need to pay tax. Wow! Just to spur this, uh, I mean. Uh, is that a cap for it? Like for how many years they don't need to pay tax? I think it's three, uh, five years. I uh. think. Uh, but of course they have to fulfill certain criteria, which mm. is they must have some I think few hundred uh, inbound tours and stuff. But yeah, it's quite interesting. Uh, and and yeah, that should be the way like, to spur the tourism industry here in Malaysia and uh, usually it's provided at uh, SMEs. So uh, I think that's a good move by the government. Uh, another allocation of course was for this uh, 6 billion for high value agricultural programs. Uh, yeah, as you know Malaysia of course, uh, if you talk about Malaysia is this what, palm oil? I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I think Malaysia is very blessed. We have oil on the ground, we also oil on the trees. <laughs> so, but of course Agriculture is not just about palm oil. We we do have many many other in the industries around. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I've seen some clients now uh, coconuts, uh, copras. Uh, they are also into cocos, uh, coffee. Uh, I have a client who who has the largest co- co- coffee plantation in, uh, in 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 Peninsula Asia. Very interesting. So mm-hmm. so yeah, the and not easy to get funds at all. Uh, I mean, in those kind of industry because. Industry. Uh, Frankly, for agriculture industries, uh, if I look at it, their so-called return on capital is not like, what, three years, five years? Sometimes you have to ten years. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, you have to wait for the tree to go, to yeah, grow, that's, you know. <laughs> yeah, correct. Even, uh, I, I've, uh, particularly, I, I have a, uh, we have a client uh, who's in the uh, goat industry. Uh, interestingly, I mean, uh, setting up a farm, waiting for the goat to grow to a certain so-called, you, 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 can't, you can't just start a goat in good uh, what you call farm with 100 goats mm-hmm. it must be a thousand goats uh. mm-hmm. feeding a thousand goats is like crazy uh. they have to eat every day uh, I, I even once told him that hey if if I go in the good industry do you uh, recommend he said hey you want it's a seven days uh, <laughs> a week job <laughs> you, you you can't take take a day off just to feed a goat 
Yeah, taking care of goats is similar to taking care of kids. <laughs> I think it's like a full time job. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. Uh, so uh, yeah, the government allocating six billion for high value agri programs is uh, yeah, it's about time. But yeah. do they do the government allocate money for the? I mean, does the government allocate money uh, for the agricultural sector? Yes, I, and also commodity crops. Yep. Uh, I think the of course when you talk about crops, they do have this mm. uh, two point four billion subsidies. Uh, for the mm. agriculture sector, uh, usually we talk about crops is fertilizer and seeds. Uh. Mm. So, uh, yeah, this is a big industry. That's uh. under the government's agency. Correct, correct, yeah. correct. I think all these farmers uh-huh. and all these kind of things, which is, uh, yeah, quite very good for the farmers and all. Uh. But uh, really also depends on the farmers. Uh. I've I've seen uh, 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 seeds given and then the, it's not just, you just put it on the ground. Really, you have to water it every day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course take care of the weed uh, a lot of them just leave it like that so mm. sometimes it's quite sad uh, to see mm. that and uh, yeah yeah um so on the bigger picture actually i i want to highlight the the economic policy of the government sure. uh, and as we all know uh, since the najib administration came into power yep. uh, he has embarked on uh, strings of economic liber- liberalization right. and i'm just wondering like all this economic liberalization of opening up trading and uh, getting more F- uh, and signing FTAs and opening up the market to bigger players. How would this affect the SMEs industry? Okay. Okay. Uh, b- before I start about liberalization, uh, after you have announced that, of course, uh, on the first January two zero one four, our government has a uh, so called uh, increased the threshold on uh, what companies are classified as SMEs. Uh, whereby uh, instead the, for the manufacturing sector, uh, the sales turn for SME sales turnover not exceeding 50 million. Previously it was 25 million, so they double it up. Or full-time employees not exceeding 200. Previously it was 150. So and, and then for the services sector, sales turnover not exceeding 20 million. Previously it was just 5 million. Or full-time employees not exceeding 75 workers. Uh, previously it was 50. So with that, uh, th- what what does that mean? Uh, uh, I look at it, uh, more SMEs can seek government assistance mm-hmm. and uh, go into their programs, which they have a lot through, I think, SME Corporation Development. Mm-hmm. SME can just, Corp. Yeah. SME Corp, yeah, you can just go to the website and yeah, get get all the information there. And uh, I mean, uh, at, uh, with the liberalization that uh, yeah, we, we are now talking about, uh, our government also is uh, trying to help. Lah. Uh, liberalization, uh, uh, to me, lah, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, it's already c- come already. Uh, in a sense, uh, like, uh, I was just sharing earlier before we, we started this interview, whereby uh, nowadays uh, you can just buy things over your smartphone, which you don't even know where you're buying it from or from who. Uh, it's so easy uh, with the internet nowadays. Uh, if I want to compare a price of a chair, uh, I, I I can just look at uh, the chair and then uh, I just type the chair and then I know how much it costs uh, in US or even in uh, UK. So uh, and and if it, I even seen people uh, yeah uh, having services whereby it, you can't buy things from US, but you can rent an address in US and then send the thing over there and then they ship it over here. Oh. So, <laughs> so uh, there's no stopping this uh, liberalization mm-hmm. whether you like it or not lah. So yes, we must liberalize, uh, but uh, I think our government is really also uh, trying to help lah in terms of like I said uh, changing the definition of SMEs having more programs and funds for them. And, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, you are, are you op- optimistic about Malaysia's economy? Uh, uh, and also, I mean, Malaysia's SME in our economy? Uh, I think Malaysia SMEs are well, very, very interesting. Uh, uh, it, it, I, I've seen people in Ch- Malaysians in China, Hong Kong, uh, Australia. Hey, uh, uh, yeah, they're doing very, very well. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, the richest man in Asia is a Malaysian, I mean, Robert Kwok, come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here, it's Hong Kong and China. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't think we should restrict ourselves to Malaysia only. Mm-hmm. Uh, we keep on protecting our own... Uh, uh, it's good that we protect certain industries uh, because the investment is quite high. But mm-hmm. generally, if I look at SMEs, I don't think a lot of them have big, big capital investments. Uh, when I say big capital investments, like if, if you think about industries like what? I told you agriculture. Agriculture is a very long, big capital investments uh, kind of industries. But usually that's done by big companies. Uh, if you talk about steel industries, uh, yes, yeah, there's a lot of protectionism over there. But somehow I can't, uh, you can't help it because uh, for a steel factory, oh my God, the, the, the investment into it is so, so high. And uh, yeah, they kind of like need to be protected uh, mm-hmm. in a sense uh, to me. Uh, 
Uh, but the 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 problem I see is a uh, uh, protect until how many years? Mm-hmm. Forever. <laughs> yeah. That 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 is the main questions. Uh, so that that we need to ask. Uh, another industry I, I look at it quite interesting. Of course, is the glove industry. Malaysia is quite large in the exporting of gloves. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, am I not mistaken that one of the company that produced glove actually became a billionaire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. recently. Yeah, 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 <laughs> recently, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I saw it somewhere yeah, in the news. Very interesting, but. Uh, just some insider news that I found. Frankly, our glove industry, uh, frankly, if, if you look at manufacturing, uh, what is their highest cost? The highest cost for glove industry, of course, is the gas power. Mm. And frankly, our Malaysian government subsidized them, subsidized them. I see. So if you look at it, hey, if if compare apple to apple, if no subsidize, no subsidy compared to uh, China or even uh, other places, actually, I, uh, 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 which. <laughs> I think uh, that that would be fairer la, in a sense. La. But uh, because our government, I think they want to help to grow this industry. Yeah, They put in their money whereby uh, through gas subsidy, which uh, uh, luckily is uh, well managed la, in a sense that hey, now we have a few world-renowned uh, glove manufacturers, which is quite interesting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but of course, it's not just uh, the, 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 the power itself. Uh, I, I heard just now you're talking about the billion company. I, I can't remember offhand what company was that. Uh, uh, talk about innovation. The, the he literally like build the the, the machines from his own hands. Uh, so wow. Yeah, he's not just like oh I just buy from China and just manufacture the gloves. There's no, no such mm-hmm. thing. Uh, the, yeah, he has his niche, which is uh, um, uh, I mean uh, knowing the machines and uh, mm-hmm. you know, tooling it so that it's even more efficient and can be comparable to others. Uh. that's why they are doing very very well. Uh, that's mm-hmm. why I heard. Uh. So yeah, interestingly, that's 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 the thing lah. But uh, what about the the rest of the SMEs? I mean, what are the risks involved in the current economy of Malaysia now? Um, what what are, are they facing? What are the risks? Uh, of course, uh, if you talk about risks, uh, I, I, I I based on uh, we did write uh, some articles for this uh, business uh, so some magazines. Uh, I think we pointed out two things. Of course, one thing is uh, talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you talk about talent SMEs, uh, I mean we are really competing <laughs> against the big boys who, any time can just uh, just take a talent away. Mm-hmm. When I say talent, it's uh, just okay. Just uh, just for example, just take us. Uh, our firm nowadays, uh, I mean we have grown to more than 200 people. Uh, we uh, we need more and more talented staff. Uh, we last night it was so easy. Uh, I think during uh, my boss always shared with me, hey, last night we just hire a person and then he works for us for 10, 20 years. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, like wow, keeping him for two months or so, it's, it's so tough. <laughs> yeah, and it's a high cost for companies as well. If com- uh, there's a if correct. the turnover uh, correct, uh, rate correct, is too correct, high. Correct. Mm-hmm. Uh, then last time we talked about responsibility. Uh, nowadays, uh, certain periods are quite uh, we call it a peak period, mm-hmm. whereby oh every company needs to be audited. And uh, last time people really responsible, they will wait until hey it's it's over. Then only they will they will leave. Mm-hmm. Nowadays they just leave. <laughs> So, oh yeah, and then we have all the programs to maintain them in terms of uh, hey, incentives, whereby we only pay after the peak period. Uh, they still just go. So, mm-hmm. uh, but it's not that. Uh, but what? Why they go, they just go? Yeah, I mean, I, do, yeah. You, do you identi- have you identified the reason why? Uh, partly, or, or for me, at the end of the day, uh, if I look at it uh, in my position now, uh, we have to work harder, which is good. Uh, to focus on a few areas of course uh, I was just saying uh, a lot of employees nowadays it's not just about money uh, really about training and development uh, you need to be close to them in terms of mentoring them uh, also giving them guidance they're looking for all these kind of things uh, building relationships with them and also when I say training it's not just on what technicality uh, you can just read a book and you know uh, know about all the technical stuff I think they're looking for more like soft skills management skills leadership skills uh, which uh, in, in, in our firm, uh, frankly, we just started uh, one, two years ago, this uh, professional leadership development center just to develop leaders out of our people, which uh, I think every company now should uh, invest in uh, because uh, I think that's the way to go. Uh, really, human capital or even this talent uh, management is yeah, play a big role for SMEs. Uh. Do you know which uh, SMEs right now is performing the best in terms of keeping the employees around? Longer? Uh, <laughs> I, I can't name specific. I, yeah. I think we are doing quite a good job. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I mean, generally, SMEs, uh, uh, keeping employees nowadays, uh, younger ones are uh, not so easy anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
uh, I mean, even myself last time, I've, I can't believe I, I never even heard of this firm, even though uh, the firm I'm in Chain and Co. Uh, the the uh, of course everybody dreams is to join a big bank or a, a, a big uh, accounting firm, but after you do some internship over there, which I did, um, I know that hey, it's it's totally different, uh, different culture. Uh, uh, people don't really know you, uh, unless you know someone big. So. <laughs> And uh, what what uh, what strike me, or I always tell everybody, is that uh, even uh, the typist who sat next to me for three months don't even know my name. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's very different uh, in over there. Uh, but of course, uh, j- uh, joining big firm do have its plus points. It's, it's, it's good for you. And you say, hey, I'm with a big firm last time. And then I, mean, I move over to another company. Hey, I'm from the big firm. So easily people recognize that, that, that company. So it uh, really depends. Uh, uh, for SMEs, okay, let's say, I just say for us example, uh, how to attract an employee or uh, uh, talented staff to join us. Uh, we must really work hard to tell them, hey, this is a career for you and prepare them for that career. When I say career, is that, hey, they be their own boss, that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, on, our, on our firm, we started with uh, two person. Now we, like I say, we have 200 and we have more than 10 partners. So frankly, uh, only with that so-called uh, uh, making uh, our yeah, our staff from just an employee to a partner itself, I think we uh, a lot of SME firms must look into that, uh, not mm-hmm. just hiring a person, paying him and uh, paying a bonus and be happy about it. I uh. see. <laughs> um, what kind of policy change that do you think government should adopt in order, or the government has adopted thus far for the economy uh, within these uh, six months? Policy changes. Um, yeah. I, I remember uh, in off air we discussed about the GST. Mm. Uh, it was announced recently. Mm. Uh, what are other uh, areas that the government is focusing now of course, in uh, the economy? Yeah, just now I talk a lot about this uh, talent and all this kind of thing. Uh, of course, our government has allocated a lot of funds for this uh, talent management. Mm-hmm. So and uh, retraining and also I think last year was uh, they, they 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 also had a. A program whereby, uh, uh, whereby where they, those uh, overseas uh, uh, talent uh, coming back to Malaysia, they also get some uh, preferential tax treatments and uh, mm-hmm. whereby just to ask them to come back and uh, work here, uh, which is uh, good. That one programs, was uh. managed by Talent Corp. Isn't yeah, it? Talent Corp. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I think uh, two zero one four budget also we talk about what all these uh, flexible work arrangements uh, for these uh, talented staff uh, So. Uh, certain government policies, yeah, I I, I see this uh, uh, more on uh, human capital training and development. Yeah, uh, this is I think the way to go forward lah. Uh, which uh, I think it will help SME tremendously lah mm. in terms of this uh, staff uh, nowadays. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. So this part of it, I look at that. So for the next six uh, months uh, until the end of 2014, mm. what is your economic outlook for Malaysia and the way forward? Mm. I uh, I mean, if I look at it, I mean, uh, based on certain, uh, I mean, internet news that I read, uh, US, UK, uh, US and Europe, uh, frankly, they are doing much better. Uh, and uh, yeah, things are pretty stable. I, I, I think we are on track to uh, hit our GDP growth that uh, we projected. And uh, for SMEs, of course, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think they're still... Uh, and the hot topic will be still uh, implementing this uh, GST, mm-hmm. which uh, how it affects our our men on the street, whereby hey, will things increase in price? I think definitely will uh. So, <laughs> uh, if I'm a businessman, uh, they will find a way to take advantage of it. Uh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it, every year after a certain festive period, Chinese New Year especially, everybody increase their price uh. <laughs> <laughs> to the sellers or anybody just to talk about this. Uh. Uh, uh, but it's not because uh, they need to. Uh, it's not because they want to. Of course, everybody wants a salary increase. Uh, every staff need to be uh, having a better life. So uh, these kind of things we we need to. Uh, I mean, uh, expect uh, cost to increase. Uh, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, unless really uh, innovation change comes. Uh. So uh, yeah, moving forward. Uh, I look at it. Um, yeah, companies will still do very well. Our economy is doing uh, will, will do much uh, better. And uh, of course, we are we already six point four percent. If you average out, eh, we should be better. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't expect it to drop anytime soon. 
and uh, with the policies the government uh, are implementing, I mean, big uh, infrastructure projects, uh, exports is doing well. Uh, I don't see any hiccups anywhere. Uh, and then the banks, uh, of course, uh, with the Bank Negara, their reserves are pretty good also based on what I read. Uh, our short, uh, I mean, we just we just owe what seven hundred seven hundred billion. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, do you, yeah. do do you think there will be a, another inflation or um an economic downturn? Since we are doing very well there. <laughs> downturn. Uh, uh, price uh, hike. You know. Uh, of course, a lot of people. Uh, this is just man on the street uh, to me. Uh, a lot of people think that oh, the property is going to taper off. Uh, a lot of property is going to be for sale. Uh, people, uh, uh, that's where the, the downturn will come, la. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people always are uh, waiting to buy cheap properties, uh. <laughs> this, <laughs> But this is for men on the street. Uh, but uh, if 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 you look at it, um, I, I, it, this, I, I don't think there's a big problem. Mm. Uh, for this year, it's quite smooth. Is yeah, that what you mean? Yeah, quite smooth. Uh, I think after the GST, yeah. Uh, we will see that coming, la, mm-hmm. whereby then goods services, uh, because of this extra tax, uh, uh, I mean, if you just look at it, uh, instead of buying a five ringgit for a, a, a plate of chakwitya, which I just had, I have to pay five ringgit plus six percent. <laughs> <laughs> so but do, do you think uh, people should worry about, I mean, not people, but since we are talking about SMEs, SMEs should worry about the GST. Should they prepare yeah. some form of uh, protection <laughs> against their <laughs> company before it I think happens? Every, every company needs to get prepared. Uh-huh. Uh, like I said, uh, we conducted 42 seminars. Uh-huh. Uh, I can't believe it. So uh, a lot of... Uh, and it's not just going for seminars. After the seminars, uh, the feedback was, hey, I get even more confused. <laughs> so, so uh, but the thing is, Okay, la, for us as a company, it's good for us, whereby uh, mm-hmm. we can help them to uh, consult them. Uh, and uh, also another area they need to look at for me, SMEs, uh, uh, they need to invest in more innovation. And, uh, when I say innovation, I think simple thing would be like in softwares. When I say softwares, they need to be, uh, I think custom is doing a lot of certification now, whereby you can't just use a... Uh, Excel to do your accounts anymore. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you need to uh, invest a bit in all these uh, GSD compliant softwares uh, call, uh, where the certification is given by custom whereby uh, uh, w- when you submit your GSD computation, uh, at least it will be correct la, in mm-hmm. a sense. So <laughs> anyway, that's yeah. all for today. All right. <laughs> Thanks for uh, sharing with us. Yeah. And um, um, I hope uh, for the best for the next uh, six months of yep. uh, the, the economy of Malaysia as well as the impact towards the Malaysian economy. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, the Malaysians uh, SMEs. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Tom Wong. Thanks, Aline.